You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible is Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul highlights examples from the biblical text that deal with humans and animals on the same level, noting that animals are also called to repentance. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. And then you have the detail. Do you see the importance of all this? That after this short verse about life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and so on and so forth, you have this addition in verse 26. When a man strikes the eye of his slave, male or female, and destroys it, he shall let the slave go free for the eye's sake. Because Vision is essential for life, as we all know. And then, in detail about the tooth and so on and so forth, without taking too much time, it's just, you know, I needed to underscore the matter here so that we would remember that it's not an easy thing. And then this is applied to the animals. Remember in my latest book, I dealt with the book of Jonah in detail, and I showed that the animals have to repent of their misdeeds in Nineveh. Not only the human beings, powerful, but we we heard that already in Genesis chapter 9. Every life will be asked even from the animals. Very powerful. Now, it doesn't mean, oh, so let's kill the end. That's not the point. The point, as I stressed in my latest book and in my latest paper, that you as a human being are put on the same level as the animals which theology, especially orthodox theology, will never accept. Why? Because we are otherwise. No, you're not otherwise. You were made on the sixth day together with the animals. And should you play the case, yes, but I'm a special, the author is much smarter than you are, because already in chapter 2, he made his story in the following way, that first the human being was molded, and then the animal is molded. So in chapter 2, the animal came about after the human being. So watch out not to make the case, as is done in theology, especially orthodox theology, that the human being was the crowning of creation. Watch out. You have to hear the entirety of the Bible. And with this, I made the link between Genesis and Jonah and the Gospel of Matthew in my latest book. And I would not only recommend, but would urge all my readers to read it carefully. So let's go back to verse 28. When an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox shall be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten. It's powerful. In other words, you may not use this opportunity. Oh, we have extra meat today. No. The ox is completely cursed, put aside. 
but the owner of the ox shall be clear. Okay. Let me remind you again of this verse in chapter 9 of Genesis. For your life blood, I will surely require a reckoning of every beast. I will require it and of man and of every man's brother. I will require the life of man. Notice how beasts and human being are put together. And whenever you have doubt, just rehear the book of Jonah. Where repentance, can you imagine trying to convince an Orthodox priest to listen to the confession of an ass or an ox? No, 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 we are human beings. We are responsible. No, every animal, you know, the word animal is from anima, which is the name fish. In other words, every breathing living person and the animals and the human beings are bulked aside under this nefesh haya. Go back to Genesis 1 and 2 and you will hear it time again mentioned in reference with the animals and the human being. And notice the push in verse 32, which gives importance again to the slaves with which the rule began. In 32, if the ox gores a slave, male or female, fantastic, this precision, the owner shall give to their master 30 shekels of silver and the ox shall be stoned. When a man lives a bit open now, you will hear the push to the extreme. When a man lives a bit open or when a man digs a pit and does not cover it, whether intentionally or by mistake, it doesn't matter because he's supposed to cover it. And notice, the text does not say, and another human being falls in. No, and an ox or an ass falls into it. The owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money to its owner and the dead beast shall be his. That's fine. It's fair enough. But important to realize that you may not sin towards the animal. And here I need to repeat to my North American hearers that scandalize me with their civilization respecting their pets a cat or a dog no i want you to hear it an ox or an ass and these are no pets even in north american civilization they are living beings that you use but more importantly, share your life. Just go and look at farms in North America. They are part of your life. But you don't hear very much about them as you hear about sheep because the perspective of the author is to present the people of God ultimately as a flock and thus flock of sheep. And let me read quickly the last two verses. When one man's ox hurts another's, an ox hurting an ox so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the price of it 
and the dead beast also they shall divide. Or if it is known that the ox has been accustomed to gore, to gore in the past, to gore in the past, and its owner has not kept it in, he shall pay ox for ox, and the dead beast shall be his. Notice de facto the expansion on Genesis 9, 5. And that's the great thing about the Bible, that it is intentionally interconnected. And I said this, and I want you to hear it again. Once you heard Genesis 1 through 11 through my ears as I explained them in my latest books, then it is as though you heard already the entire Bible. Bottom line, life slash bloods are God's and his alone. He is the proprietor of anything that lives. And later we shall hear how the Adama, which is living in the perspective of the Bible, not only because it gives you life through the grass and the trees and the fruits, but because you and the animals were shaped, molded out of it. And that's the importance of the Adama. And thus, the Adama is a living category. It is not artificial. In, and with this, I invite you to go back to the beginning mainly, that you may not have an altar out of stone. Stone usually is something, remember, a chiseled stone, meaning it's your work. Okay, that's why Rome is filled with statues of stone and not with boulders, because boulders are not considered an art especially in modern art, you know how it is, where everything goes. But that was not the rule in the past. And this equality between living beings, meaning animals and human beings, is continued in 22.1, where the theft of animals is, is condemned. It's not because the animal is the possession of the neighbor, but because the animal is part of the little society. Remember, think of it always as a Roman household or as a middle age manor where all beings, including the trees and the land, were one together under the rule of a knight or a sir. But ultimately, you may not do as you please. Imagine a shepherd would be taught by the civilization of human beings well, you control everything and you do as you please. And he is told that you can decide even to kill all your sheep. No one would stop you. Yes, but without your sheep, you will die. In other words, wisdom will stop you. Watch out, brother. That's not the way to be. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.